is none like you in all the earth. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless you and we magnify you. How sweet it is to dwell in your presence, Lord. We honor you, God. Amen, amen, blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belongs to our God forever and ever. Amen, 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 blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belongs to our God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belongs to our God forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to come and to be in your presence, to sing sweet praises to you, O oh God. It is an honor. It is a privilege. Thank you, O oh God, for this time with you. It's in these moments we get our strength. It's in these moments that we get our joy. It is in this moment that we just get to love on you. Thank you, God. In moments like this, I will lift up my hands. I will lift up my hands to Jesus. In moments like this, I will lift up my hands. I will lift up my hands to the Lord, singing I love you, Lord, singing I love you, Lord, singing I love you. Oh, I give 
honor, I give honor to your name. Oh Lord, oh Lord, honor, honor to your name. Oh Lord, oh Lord, for your name, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give honor to your name, oh Lord, honor to your name, oh Lord, for your name, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord, glory to your name, O Jesus reign. 
Reign, reign, Jesus, reign. Reign, Jesus, reign. Reign, Jesus, reign. Reign, Jesus, reign. King of Zion, Judas, Lion, reign, Jesus, reign. Busa, Jesu, Busa. Busa, Jesu, Busa. Wamorena, Wamorena, Kosia, Nekosi, Busa, Jesu, Busa, 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 Jesu, Busa, Busa, Jesu, Busa, Homore. I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you. You have done what no man has done, and you will do what no man can do. I have no, I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you because you have done you have done what no man has done and you will do you will do what no man can do i have no other god but you I have no other God but you. I have done, you have done, you have done, done what, what no man has done. And you will do what no man can do. Kadosh. Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. You have done what no man has done, and you will do what no man can do. I have no, I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you. You are the reason why I lift my hands, why I lift my voice, why I sing to you. You are the reason why I lift my hands, why I lift my voice, why I sing to you. You are the reason, you are the reason I'm alive today. I am here to say it's all because of you. You are the reason, 
You are the reason. 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 Thank you, Lord. You are the reason. If not for you, where would we be? God, thank you for being the reason that we are alive today, that we have breath in our lungs, oh God. You are the reason that we even have an opportunity to come into the presence of God. Thank you, God. You are the reason. You are the reason. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight on the inside, on the inside of me. Let praises rise on the inside, on the inside of me. May you delight on the inside, on the inside of me. Cause all I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be lifted high. Let praises rise. Let praises rise on the inside, on the inside of me. May you delight on the inside, on the inside of me. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be Oh, 
Sana in the highest. Let our King be lifted up. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be lifted. Desire, 
The spirit without measure unto oh, your name, unto your name, I will raise my sacrifice unto your name, unto
Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We thank God. Amen. Are you ready for Bible studies? Yes, we are. Nikki, thank you. Powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please, you may be seated in the heavenly places. And so last week, I taught on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I taught on the gift of the Holy Spirit. And tonight, I want us to study another dimension of the Holy Spirit, of which I think is extremely uh, important because so many people have been missing it because they don't understand. They don't understand. Hallelujah. So tonight, we are going to be studying on how the Holy Spirit operates in his gifts. 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 Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and take absolute and complete control over these Bible studies. Holy Spirit, have your way. Make yourself be made manifest. Let us understand your operations, your mundus operandi as it relates to your gifts. And Father, let it have impact upon our soul, spirit, body, mind, and heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so, like I said, last week we studied the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that at this time, you know the gifts of the Holy Spirit and I also believe that you know they are functionalities and you now understand uh, each gift, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirit, gift of faith, gift of healing, gift of speaking diverse kinds of tongues, gift of interpretation uh, of tongues and gift of prophecy and all the other gifts. I believe that this time you understand it. Now, it is not just enough to understand these gifts. It is not just enough to know about these gifts. The question here is that if you have these gifts, how do you operate in these gifts? And how does these gifts operate? What is the functionality? How does the Holy Spirit operate through these gifts. So, I'm going to be very, very pragmatic concerning this teaching. Very pragmatic. I will give you so many analogies and examples that you can relate to. So, first and foremost, I want you to turn your Bibles quickly to Luke chapter 4, the verse number 18. Luke chapter 4, the verse number 18. Now, this is Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus speaking. But Jesus was quoting this scripture from the book of Isaiah. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Now take me back to the top. Oh, okay, let me finish it. Let me finish it. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. 
Now, take me to the top and I want you to take note of something. This is Bible studies and so we will take our time. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. So, in the first place, you must understand that Jesus didn't just got up and start preaching. Jesus didn't just get up and start healing and start doing miracles. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord, first and foremost, came upon him, which is the Holy Spirit, came upon him. And I know that all of you remember when John the Baptist was baptizing him, the Bible says that the heavens opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. And the Father said, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And so from that very day, the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him. Which Spirit? The Holy Spirit. That is number one. Number two, he says that because he has anointed me. He didn't say that God anointed me. He said the Holy Spirit came upon me, and the Holy Spirit anointed me to preach. You see, one of the functionalities and one of the, uh, um, the mundus operandi of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is an enabler. The Holy Spirit is an enabler. So, basically, this scripture is telling us that Without the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus and anointing him to preach and to do the works that he did, he couldn't have done it. Because it is the Holy Spirit that enabled him, one, to preach to the poor. Give me the next one. To heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. All these things. Jesus did it. Because the Holy Spirit. Enabled him. Anointed him. Operated through him. That is why he was able to do it. And so it is the Holy Spirit. That anoints us. It is the Holy Spirit that anoints us. And you must understand. I have said this so many times. But I want to repeat it again. You must understand that the dispensation that we are in. It is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. It is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. That is the dispensation that we are in. The dispensation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in charge of the church. The Holy Spirit is the leader of the church. The Holy Spirit is the teacher of the church. The Holy Spirit is the prophet of the church. The Holy Spirit is the administrator of the church. It is the Holy Spirit that appoints. It is the Holy Spirit that anoints. You must understand this. That is why it is so important to know the Holy Spirit and to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because one of the things that I've come to realize is that in the church and in the body of Christ, most people don't know who the Holy Spirit is. We have always thought that the Holy Spirit is the anointing oil. We have also thought that the Holy Spirit is the wind. We have also thought that the Holy Spirit is, the, is fire. We have also thought that the, the Holy Spirit is water. Listen, all these things that I mentioned is not the Holy Spirit, but they are emblems. They are symbols of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit can manifest himself as fire. The Holy Spirit can manifest himself through the anointing oil. The Holy Spirit also can manifest himself through water. Because water, it is a representation of the Holy Spirit. And it is also a representation of the word. 
The Holy Spirit also can manifest himself in the form of a dove. But it doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is a dove. It's just a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And so the fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The anointing oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. But they are not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. And he is the third in the Godhead. And when I talk about Godhead, I am talking about the Trinity. He is the third in the Godhead. In other words, the Holy Spirit himself is God. But oftentimes, because we don't know the Holy Spirit and we don't understand the Holy Spirit and we have no relationship with the Holy Spirit, we deal with the Holy Spirit as an element. And when I talk about the when I talk about element, I'm talking about wind, I'm talking about fire, I am talking about the water, and all those things that represent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. If the Holy Spirit is a person, then it means that the Holy Spirit speaks, the Holy Spirit sees, the Holy Spirit hears. The Holy Spirit walks. The Holy Spirit smells. Why? Because he is a person. You must also understand that if the Holy Spirit is a person, then the Holy Spirit also has emotions. The Holy Spirit can be happy and the Holy Spirit can be upset. The Holy Spirit can be joyous and the Holy Spirit can be mad. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is not an element. The Holy Spirit is a person. We will get to that shortly and I will elaborate on that. So Jesus was able to preach, was able to do the things that he did because the Holy Spirit gave him the enablement. You cannot operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit Without the Holy Spirit giving you the enablement to operate in his gifts. And you must also understand that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't use everybody the same way. Especially as it relates to his gifts. Let me be pragmatic here and give you an example. The way the Holy Spirit will use me in his gifts will be completely different from the way the Holy Spirit will use you in his gifts. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't operate in the same way. The functionality of the Holy Spirit is a lot not the same way, which means that, for instance, I will give you an example. The Holy Spirit will operate through Benehi, and you will see Benehi blowing wind. He will just blow some air on you. Somebody falls under the power, or somebody is healed through the blowing of the air. That is how the Holy Spirit uses him. But I want to tell you where the confusion is. So somebody sees that. And the person also gets up and starts blowing the air. You will blow all the air that is inside of you. And the air that is in the atmosphere. Nothing will happen. The reason is because you have not yet discovered how the Holy Spirit operates and uses you in his gifts. He has discovered that is why he can do that and get results. 
But oftentimes, because we have not discovered and we don't know, we try to mimic other people. We try to imitate other people. We try to duplicate. And oftentimes, we get disappointed. Because when the Holy Spirit is operating and functioning through his gifts, he functions and operates through his gifts in different dimensions and in different ways. So you cannot subscribe to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and expect that after you have received the gifts, God is going to use you. The, God, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to operate through the gift exactly as he does with Benahim or as he does with Pastor Grant or as he does with uh, 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 Charles Stanley or as he does with uh, 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 Rehan Bonke. No. The Holy Spirit doesn't function like that in any form or shape. You see, when you look through the scriptures, you realize that the Bible makes us to understand that Peter's shadow healed the sick. His shadow healed the sick. And you realize that beside Peter, there was nobody else in Bible that was used like that. That the person was laying hands, healing the sick, and his shadow also was healing the sick. There was nobody. Because that is how the Holy Spirit uses him. And that is how the Holy Spirit operates through the gifts that have been bestowed upon him. You realize also that the Apostle Paul, it was only him that aprons and handkerchiefs were taken off of him. And when they lay it to the sick, they recover. Why? Because that is how the Holy Spirit uses him. When the Holy Spirit starts moving and operating through his gift, through him. And beside that one, you won't see Anybody else, none of the disciples, none of the apostles was used like that. And so you cannot see somebody. It is good to admire. It is good to desire. It is good to to want to be at a certain level and a certain dimension and wanting the Holy Spirit to use you like he is using someone. But don't try to mimic the same thing you will be embarrassed. You will be disappointed. You will be discouraged. You must learn how to discover how the Holy Spirit uses you. You know, one time, a friend of mine invited me for a conference. It was a prophetic conference. And we were two prophets. One was from Florida. I don't want to mention his name. He's a very well-known prophet. Very, very well-known tele-evangelist prophet. So we're staying in the same hotel. And he came to my meeting because I ministered before he ministered. So he came to my meeting and saw me minister prophetically and other stuff. Now, after the service and everything, we went back to our hotel and we were taking dinner together with our host. And then this prophet told me that he ministers in the prophetic, but he likes the way I minister in the prophetic. And I asked him why. And then he said that, me, I don't see angels, but I want to see angels. And so show me how to see angels. You know, I just smile. You see, he's missing it. He's missing The fact that you are not seeing angels and when you are operating in the prophetic, you don't operate with angels doesn't mean that your giftings is not unique and it doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit is not using you. The Holy Spirit uses you in a dimension that you don't operate with angels, but the Holy Spirit unravel and unfold things to you and you see it clearly and what you say is accurate and he is a very accurate prophet accurate 
It's just that me, that is how the Holy Spirit uses me in his gifts. It doesn't mean that I am superior to him. Or he is superior to me. The fact of the matter is that the Holy Spirit uses us differently. Differently. The Holy Spirit uses us differently. So the way the Holy Spirit will use your friend is different from the whole way the Holy Spirit is going to use you. And the way the Holy Spirit will use you is different from the way the Holy Spirit is going to use your friend. And I want to underpin this fact. It may be the same gift. You have the same gift. But the operations are different. The same gift, but the operations are different. Ora Robert, in his healing crusades, Ora Robert, after he has finished preaching and everything, he will sit down and he will call out the sick. And the sick, they will line up long lines and he will lay hands on all of them for hours he will be laying hands on all of them and as he lay hands they recover they recover they recover they recover they recover as he lay hands now T.L. Osborne in his healing crusades he will preach and what he will do is that he will just start calling the infirmities the afflictions, the diseases, not laying hands, but just mentioning it. Oh, there is somebody, you are being healed of that. You are being healed of that. And you are being, and you will see the miracles all over the place. The signs and wonders all over the place. It doesn't mean that Ora Robert is more powerful than T.L. Osborne or T.L. Osborne is more powerful than Ora Robert because he doesn't lay hands. It's just that the Holy Spirit uses them differently, even though both of them operate in the same power gift. What is the power gift? The power gift is the gift of healing, gift of working of miracles, and gift of faith. They have the same gift, but the Holy Spirit uses them differently. Ora Robert's son, Richard Roberts. This is how he operates in the power gift. If he want, if he is ministry and there is somebody here that is sick of any infirmity, maybe your, your left leg is hurting you. This is how he gets to know that there is somebody whose leg left is hurting him. He will feel pain in his left leg. It is an indication to him that there is somebody in the crowd or in the church or in the midst of the people that is having pain in the left leg. So you will hear him say that there is somebody, you are here, your left leg, you are feeling pain in your left leg. Your left leg. And by saying that and saying you are healed, the person is healed. That is how the Holy Spirit uses him as it relates to his gifts. That is why it's important to know how the Holy Spirit uses you as it relates to his gifts. You must pay attention. You must be sensitive. Don't just mimic. You will be frustrated. You will be disappointed. You will be hurt. And I want you also to know that you cannot use your own strategy when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Oh, this is my strategy by which I operate in the gifts. If you have a strategy by which you operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I want to tell you straightforward. They are not the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have manufactured something that we don't know what it is. But definitely not the, 
gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because if it is the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit must be in charge. The Holy Spirit must be in control. You cannot have a strategy for it. That is not the way it functions. The scripture that we just read, Jesus didn't have a strategy to preach and to heal the sick and to heal the broken hearted and to set the captives free. No. The Holy Spirit has anointed him and it is the Holy Spirit that uses him in that dimension. That is why it's so important that be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. You will see people, I will give you an example, another example. Uh, we are living in a world that people will just take other people's messages and go and preach. But you will realize that if you take the message that the original person preached, who received it from the Holy Ghost, and the person who duplicated the message, if you listen to both of them, you will see the difference. You will know that the second one is a copycat. Just mimicking, just using the same words. But you realize that the person who received the message from the Holy Spirit was speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and as you listen, you realize that the word is doing something to your soul. It's doing something to your spirit. You are being convicted. You are being transformed. You are being encouraged. You are being inspired. You are being motivated. The operations of the Holy Spirit. The operations of the Holy Spirit as it relates to his gifts. You know, a friend of mine from Barbados was in a meeting. I've shared this with you before. Was in a meeting and he operates in the power gifts. I know that um, some of you are getting confused when I keep on mentioning power gift. You see, we have the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in the book of Corinthians is divided into three. Into three. We have what we call the vocal gifts. The vocal gifts are one, interpretation of tongues, speaking diverse kinds of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. Vocal gifts. Why is it called vocal gifts? Because those gifts operate through your vocals. Speaking. Speaking. Gift of prophecy. Speaking diverse kinds of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. We call it vocal gifts. The next three, we call them revelational gifts. Revelational gifts. Because those three gifts got to do with revelation. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirit. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirit, we call it the revelational gifts. And then we have the power gifts. The power gift is the gift of miracles, gift of healing, and then gift of faith. Those three, we call it the power gift. I believe that now you understand. So when I mention the power gift, I am talking about gift of healing, gift of miracles, and gift of faith. So this friend of mine operates in the power gift. He comes from Barbados. He was in a meeting. And he was in a, a friend of mine's meeting in Houston. And there was a young man that came into the meeting that was using clutches. And this young man, the left leg, the left limbs 
was very weak, so couldn't walk on it. And so he uses the clutches to support the right leg to be able to walk. And the left leg also has shrunk. And so the left leg is smaller than the right leg. It's, it's, it's like polio. If you know polio, the disease polio, something like that. So it was time for offering and they were giving the offering and then he saw this guy in the line coming to give offering. And the Holy Spirit told him, kick the, the leg that has shrunk. The small leg, the leg that looks like polio, kick that leg. So he waited, 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 waited. He gave his offering. When he gave his offering, he said, young man, stand here. So the young man stood there. Everybody was looking. His right leg, just like you kick a soccer ball. He went back like that and kicked the guy. The whole place was quiet. Everybody was, oh! The guy fell to the ground. Hmm. Fell to the ground in pain. But when the guy stood up, the tiny little leg has grown to the same size of the right leg. He doesn't need to use clutches. In fact, when you see him, you will not believe that it is the same guy. Now, that is how God, the Holy Spirit, used him. And then you too, you try to mimic. You call somebody. Stand there. <laughs> and then you break the person's leg. The kind of beatings you receive, you end up in jail. They will sue you. They will sue you. That is how the Holy Spirit uses him. That is how the Holy Spirit uses him. That is not how the Holy Spirit uses you. Find out the way the Holy Spirit uses you in his gifts. And be comfortable in it and operate in it. William Braham, <coughs> a very anointed prophet of God, he operates in the revelational gifts and also operates in the power gift. The revelational gifts and also the power gift. So when he is ministering to the sick and the afflicted, he would tell them into details the sickness, like a doctor who has diagnosed his or her patient would tell the person where the sickness is come, coming from, how long. The person have had this sickness, this infirmity, and what is happening to the person's body as a result of the sickness. And by the time he finished talking and everything and telling the person what was going on with that infirmity and disease and affliction in that person's body, by the time he finished, the person is whole. That is how God, the Holy Spirit, sorry, uses him in the gifts. You see, what made William Braham started making mistakes, a lot of mistakes, was that William Braham wasn't called to be a teacher or a preacher. William Braham was called to demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. And so at his time, it was at the same time that God started raising and lifting Ora Robert. And he saw Ora Robert preaching and healing the sick. Preaching and healing the sick. So he decided that, okay, I'm going to add preaching and teaching to my gift. And then he started making, committing all kinds of errors. All kinds of errors. Started calling himself, he's the Elijah of today. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach. Which means, if he has not anointed you to preach, don't preach. Operate in the areas where the Holy Spirit has anointed you, has empowered you, has enabled you to operate in. And stick to 
into it. Maximize it. Develop it and grow in it. Never try to operate like how somebody operates because you saw the person operating in that dimension and he was getting results or she was getting results. And so you too, you want to operate in that same dimension. You will be frustrated, discouraged, and disappointed. Not only that, when you do that, you grieve the Holy Spirit. When you do that, you grieve the Holy Spirit. You grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, I told you earlier on that the Holy Spirit is not an element. The Holy Spirit is a person. And the Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. Well, let's look at this scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, the verse number 30. Ephesians chapter 4, the verse number 30. Now, I want you to watch something in Ephesians 4, 30. It says that, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And so, if the Holy Spirit gets grieved, it means that the Holy Spirit is a person and the Holy Spirit has emotion because you cannot be grieved without having emotions. That is why trees don't get grieved. Tables don't get grieved. Chairs don't get grieved. The microphone I'm holding doesn't get grieved. Why? Because these things don't have emotions. And so if the Holy Spirit can be grieved, then it means that the Holy Spirit is a person and the Holy Spirit has emotions. So what am I trying to say? If you don't function and operate in the way that the Spirit of the Lord is leading you and you are trying to mimic what you have seen and how the Holy Spirit uses other people, by doing that, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. You are grieving the Holy Spirit. You are grieving the Holy Spirit. And we are not called to grieve the Holy Spirit because, listen, when the Holy Spirit is grieved, most people don't know. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, instead of the Holy Spirit working through you and standing with you and empowering you and undergetting you, the Holy Spirit turn against you. The Holy Spirit will turn against you. Oh, let me show you. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah 63, the verse number 10. I love to... Uh, support everything that I say with scripture. If there is no scripture for me to support what I'm saying, don't buy it. It's a lie. There is nothing that you preach or teach or any analogy that it doesn't have scriptural support. If you cannot give scripture, so it means that it's not in the Bible. It's not God. It's not scriptures. Don't buy it. It's a lie. Isaiah 63, the verse number 10. It says that, but they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Watch this. So he turned himself against them as an enemy. So he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them. So you see, the people that the Holy Spirit is supposed to be fighting for, now the Holy Spirit is fighting against them. Why? Because they grieved the Holy Spirit. They rebelled against the Holy Spirit. What is the rebel against the Holy Spirit? For instance, if the Holy Spirit uses you in a particular dimension, but you ignore that dimension by which the Holy Spirit uses you, and you subscribe to somebody else's, you are grieving the Holy Spirit and you are rebellious. You are rebellious. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will become an enemy. Will turn against you. That is why singers, if somebody comes and he's singing and you don't hear the words, just showing the voice, but things are happening. 
That is how God he came. He said, <laughs> no way. You don't hear any lyrics. But he is just, you know, showcasing the voice. He said, ooh, 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 ooh. And then you too, you come. Because you saw that things were happening. The Holy Spirit was moving. People were falling under the power. Healing was taking place. People were receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so you too, you said in your mind, the next time I'm going to sing, I'm going to use the same thing. So you too, you show up, you say, <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> You will leave that place with your head back because the shame will be too much. The embarrassment will be too much. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. As you operate in the gifts, as the Holy Spirit enables you, and you are very observant and watchful, you get to know how the Holy Spirit uses you. Me, <laughs> I don't force myself to prophesy. And nobody also can force me to prophesy. You can't. You won't make me a false prophet. I know when the Holy Spirit is leading me to prophesy. And I know when he's not leading me. And I will not succumb to the expectations of people. Saying that, oh, he's a prophet. And so every service, every meeting, he has to prophesy. If the Holy Spirit leads me that way, praise God. But if he doesn't, I will not force myself. Because when I do that, I am rebelling against the Holy Spirit. I am grieving the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will turn against me. The gift is great. The gift is wonderful. But it is not enough just having these gifts. You must know how the Holy Spirit operates in these gifts through you for you to be effective, for you to affect, for you to have impact. You may be a singer, you may not have the voice, but when you sing, things happen. I have seen it before. <laughs> things happen. I saw those who had the voice, the melodious voice, the soprano. But because they don't know how the Holy Spirit, the gifts, operate through them, they just entertain. And one day, a lady showed up my voice is better. The day they asked her to come and sing, we all look at each other's faces like that. What happened? We underestimated her. We wrote her up. But when she took the microphone, <laughs> it was an all night. The preacher didn't preach that day. And he didn't sing any song out of this world. No. No. The song he sang is, this is my story and this is my song. I'm telling you, the things that me, I was shocked. I, everybody was shocked. The power, the move of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God came down. People were on fire. People were praying. You can literally feel the presence of God. You must know how the Holy Spirit uses you in his gift. And you must subscribe to it and stay there. Don't move an inch. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that tonight somebody has been blessed with these Bible studies. You have learned a lot in these Bible studies. But before... I give you the opportunity to ask questions. I will take three questions. Uh, before I give you the opportunity to ask questions, <clears throat> there is a friend of mine who 
try to mimic my old man. <clears throat> One of the areas that my old man is an authority in, like deaf and dump. I don't care how dump or deaf you are. <laughs> if he lay hands on you, that that spirit will leave you automatically. You is gone. Is gone. That is one dimension by which God uses him. And usually, he will lay hands and he will say, Go! Get out! Go! Go! So, this guy have seen him done that. <laughs> so, in a meeting, he decided, he said, Oh, all the damp and the deaf, come. So, <laughs> When Satan want to embarrass you, a lot of dumb and deaf were in the meeting that night. They line up. He lands. Go! Go! He said, go, 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 until, until there was no voice. And nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. I was in that meeting. I was sitting there. I wanted to disappear. I was feeling embarrassed for him. I didn't know what to do. And I didn't want to get up and get out. I was standing there. I said, God, please, let him stop so that we can get out of here. That is how God uses him. That is not how God uses you. It doesn't mean that you cannot heal the damp and the death. But if you discover the way the Holy Spirit uses you in that dimension, maybe you, you don't need to scream or yell and command the Spirit to go away. All you need to do is to just rebuke it or just lay hands and resorts. But because of ignorance. Ignorance. Hallelujah. Okay, so Last week, I taught on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And um, I was confronted this afternoon that I didn't give opportunity for questions. And so, if last week you have any question concerning uh, uh, what I taught and the teaching that we had on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you can lift up your hands. And then if you have any question also concerning what we have just studied, you can just lift up your hands and I will call you and uh, you can ask your question. Okay. Can you get a microphone? Okay, you have a microphone. Okay, great. Thank you, Papa. Such You're a welcome. blessing. Um, my question from last week is, you, were, you gave an example about the lady who went to heal somebody in the hospital and the sickness came upon her and so you have to be careful with that. What confused me was about that was how do you know, you know, that this is, this is not the prayer, I'm, uh, this is not something I'm supposed to tackle and this is, you know, something I am supposed to tackle. You know, because I was thinking about you know, you teach messages like fire prayers, corrosive prayers, acidic prayers, you know. And it makes you feel like you can conquer the world, you know. So how do you discern or know, you know, what is for you and what is not for you? Then my question for this week is, um, do you believe that with the ways that the Holy Spirit uses each person, it has to be biblical? Good question. So I'm answering the first question and I believe that all of you heard uh, the question that she asked. Uh, I, I cited an example of a lady that um, heard that the friend has been admitted at the hospital, specifically at the ICU. Um, she was paralyzed and so she went to the hospital, to the ICU and prayed for her and the friend recovered, immediately discharged. But when she got home, 
the sickness that the friend had came upon her. She was crippled, paralyzed. She was in a vegetative state. And so she asked the husband to call me. And so uh, the husband called me. I got there. I was shocked, you know, because I've seen her in church. She came to church. I was shocked to see her in a vegetative state. So I asked her, what happened? And then she told me uh, the story and she said, I know that this is what happened because I prayed for my friend and this was the sickness, you know. So I prayed for her. She recovered immediately. Now, so the question that Annalisa is asking is this. How do you discern to know that this is beyond me, this is above me, this is not something that I should be touching? Now, the reason why also you must think like that is because one, you must understand that all of us, we don't carry the same presence. Number two, the anointing that is, all of us, we are anointed. But the anointing that we carry is with measure. Which means that there are some that is highly anointed than others. I remember a couple of years ago, um, the Holy Spirit taught me something that there are people, when they come into a city, their mere presence in a city influences the entire city. The entire, if they land in any, their mere presence affects the entire city or affects an entire nation, one person. They are some that, their spiritual influence is like a mile. Some two miles, some three miles. It means that Beyond the three miles, they have no influence, power, and authority. Beyond those miles. Their influence is within three miles, or four miles, or six miles. There are some that they are influenced. When they enter into a community, it covers the entire community. Let me give you an example. I'm answering your question. Let me give you an example. I think I've shared this time without number. In Rochester, New York, it was a bright, bright day. There was no any forecast of rain in any form or shape. The sun was up. Suddenly, the whole atmosphere started changing. Rain started falling. So, a young man was saying that, ah, but they never said that it was going to rain. It wasn't part of the weather forecast. They never said anything. In fact, they said it was going to be sunny the whole day. Where is this rain coming from? Whilst he was saying that, there was an elderly lady that was passing by that heard him. And then the elderly lady turned and said that the reason why, I suspect that the reason why the atmosphere has changed is because Charles Finney is in town. You see, one man influence covered the entire city. Rochester, New York. Covered, changed the entire atmosphere. And it truly, Charles Finney was in town. And so, we have dimensions. For instance, the kind of demon that you fight is different from mine. I don't fight demons. Pastor Paul will not fight a demon. Because of his ranking in the spirit. Demons, witches don't have time for him. Witches know that they don't have time for me. So if Satan is assigning any spirit, it has to be a higher spirit. Principality. Principality. There are some that deal with witches, demons, but there are some that deal with principality. So answering your question, if your level is to deal with witches and deal with demons and you deal with principalities, you have to understand that there is something we call demonic retaliation. You are going to have it. How are you going to deal with it? How are you going to handle it? When you don't carry that authority and that power, it's going to affect you. They are going to get you. And so, one, you said, how do you discern? How do you know? It is very important that in such cases, pray 
before you go. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Pray before you go. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Pray. Holy Spirit, do you want me to go there and pray? Lay hands on her and pray for her. Or I should stay in my house. The effect and the impact on this lady, I believe beyond every reasonable doubt, that the fact that she went to the hospital and laid hands. If she had prayed and interceded from home, the, the ramification, the, the repetition will not be like that. He doesn't have that authority and power and oil upon her to lay hands. That is why the Bible says, suddenly lay hands on what? No man. You must be moved by the Spirit. You must be moved by the Spirit before you lay hands. That's why the Bible instructs, don't just get up and be laying hands. Don't do it. You see? So, you must pray about it and let the Spirit of God lead you before you do it. Amen. Have I answered your first question? Okay, I've forgotten your second question. Um, <laughs> you too, you have forgotten. <laughs> um, is, um, the ways that the Holy Spirit used you, do you think it has to be biblically, you know, sound? Okay, so the question here is that the way the Holy Spirit uses you, does it have to be scriptural? Does it have to be biblical? Yes, it has to. It has to. If I tell you, and I say, I'm giving you prophetic direction, I should be able to tell you that this prophetic direction that I'm giving you, this is the scripture that supports it. If I cannot find any example in the Bible, you should have you should have a problem with it. For instance, I will give you an example. A couple came to me that were believing God for the fruit of the womb. And they went to a prophetic meeting. They met with the prophet. They told the prophet about their issues, believing God for the fruit of the womb. The prophet told them that he is going to give them prophetic direction. And they should follow the prophetic direction because when they were talking to him, this is what the Holy Spirit whispered to him. They should go and get a padlock, a brand new one, lock it, go to a riverside or a lakeside and throw it into the river. They should lock the padlock and throw it into the river. So they were telling me this. And they did it. And they believe in it. And they thought that after they have done that, they are going to have children. But it became more complicated. And I told them that it is not God. And then they said, but he said the Holy Spirit whispered to him and it is a prophetic direction. And then I asked them, give me one scripture that supports it. I will not let anybody follow any prophetic instruction or the Holy Spirit leading me in a certain dimension where I cannot have biblical support for it. I will not do it. I know it's not the Holy Spirit. Where in the Bible, where it talks about if you want a miracle or a break, children, lock the... I said it's demonic. I said what you did, I will tell you what you did. And I said, it will take the finger of God for you to conceive. I told both of them. They were in my office. I said, it will take the hand and the finger of God for you to conceive. Otherwise, both of you, you will live together the rest of your life. You will never have any child. If you conceive, you will have miscarriage. And they were telling me that is what had been happening. Why? Because immediately he, they bought that padlock and they lock it and they throw it into that lake. One the padlock represents the womb of the woman. And so locking the padlock, she herself, she had locked her womb. And then throwing the padlock into the river, she has given all her children to the marine spirit. You won't have any children. 
You have given it to them for free. So, if anybody tells you uh, 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 operating in the gifts, and again, the Holy Spirit is not one-dimensional. The Holy Spirit is multi-dimensional. But whichever way the Holy Spirit uses you, it must be in conformity with scriptures. God never do anything outside of scripture. Never. Whatever we ask God, it must be in the perimeters of his word for him to do. If it is outside, I don't care how you cry, how you weep, and how you ask him. He won't give it to you. It must be scripturally based. So, nobody can operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit where you cannot see any example in the Bible. It must be scripturally based. Papa, please, my follow-up to that is, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never seen, you know, any of the prophets or Jesus kick anybody. So is that like a one-off thing or is there a time where God uses such extreme measures? Good question. And so sometimes it depends on the circumstance. It depends on the circumstance. In the sense that if it is of God and it is of the Holy Spirit, you will see the manifestation. If it is not, you won't see it. Like the example that I gave you that they, they asked them to get a padlock, throw it, it's a prophetic direction. Their problem became worse. The woman was conceiving but the woman was having miscarriages, 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 miscarriages. Because you have sold your woman and your children to the marine spirit. And so there are times that the Holy Spirit will lead you in this extreme demonstration. But when the Holy Spirit leads you in that extreme demonstration, you will see the results. You will see the results will be clear. You will know that this is the Holy Spirit that is because you will see the result. You will see the manifestation. It will become visible, tangible. Everybody will see it. Amen. Any other question? Okay. Do something yeah. with his okay, okay. Go ahead. So okay, um, my question has to do with um, desire, um, where it's a good desire and then a misguided um, desire. So, for example, I come to this church and I see that my pastor is walking visibly to me. He's walking in the gift of intercession and prayer, and he's walking in the gift of um, the prophetic, and. To me, I'm thinking if I'm sitting under the covering of this man in two, three years, whatever number of years it is, it will it will be a travesty to sit under his roof and not walk in a dimension that he's walking in. And I yearn that that gifts that he has. Is that a misguided desire or is that um, a desire that is um, that is acceptable to to uh, to God? And also we talk about again the desire of the prophetic gifts and you mentioned the three classifications and uh, the bible first corinthians talked about to one he gave this to another he gave that we looked at paul for example and paul seemed to walk in all three classifications is it possible for somebody to walk in um, all three classifications and in all nine gifts in uh, first corinthians thank you very, very, very good question. Very, very good question. Clap for him. Very, very good question. And so, it is good to desire. I don't know if those that are online heard the question. The question is that if, for instance, somebody is coming to Prayer City and sees that the gift of this ministry is the gift of intercession and prayer and the prophetic and the revelational gifts and the power gifts. And as I come to this ministry, I desire to walk in that gift and operate in that gift. Is 
that desire a misguided desire or it is a good desire? That is the question. One, I want you to understand that it is a good desire because don't forget, Paul said that he wishes that everybody would desire the gift. In other words, the Apostle Paul wants everybody to operate in the gift. Two, it is good to see an oil anointing a gift on somebody and desire to have that gift. It is not a sin. It is not misguided. Why will Elijah say to Elijah, I want the double portion? He said, I want the double portion. Elijah asked him, what do you want? What? I'm going. I'm going. You won't see me again. I'm going today. But I want to do something for you. What do you want? He said, I want the double portion. The double portion of the oil. The double portion of the gift. The double portion of the prophetic. Because it wasn't misguided and it was a good thing. Elijah told Elisha, if you see me being taken, what you have asked, you will receive it. And he got the double portion. He got the double portion. You must also understand that you can have an impartation of the gift by the laying on of hands. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, you can receive it by the laying on of hands. Which means that I may be preaching, I may be ministering, and I may lay hands on somebody, and the person can receive the impartation of the gift that is upon me, upon him or her, and the person can function in those gifts. And oftentimes even, when you sit under a gift, for a long time, it robs of you. It robs of you. I was with Archbishop Dr. Williams. He's my spiritual father. He still is. I'm still with him. There was no time that I thought of, I want to preach like him. No. I just love his spirit and his passion. I just served him. And I enjoy just serving him. But you see, Anywhere that I go in this world, I will find somebody who will come to me after I finish preaching, who will come to me and they will ask me this question. They ask me all the time. And when they ask me, I know where they are coming from. They will ask me, oh, do you know a man by the name of Archbishop Duncan Williams? And immediately they ask me, I know why they are asking me, because they see similarities between myself and him. Why? Because I sat under him, served him, and so his gift robbed off me. So you can receive an impartation by serving. You can also receive an impartation by sitting under that gift and under that anointing. And so it's not misguided. It is a good desire. That is why when you look at the body of Christ, uh, any time a, a patriarch uh, uh, die uh, uh, in the body of Christ, everybody is running after their mantle. Oh, let the mantle of Billy Graham follow me. Let the mantle of Ora Robert follow me. Because it is not wrong. It is not misguided. It is not covetousness. It is not greed for you to desire it and have an impartation. Amen. What was your second question? Yes, good question. And so he asked if, because when we read Corinthians, he said, to one he gave to another, and it, it was all single, 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 single gift. Do you remember? Single, single, single gift. So he's asking, is it possible for one person to operate in the revelational gift, which is word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirit? Or is it possible for one person to operate in the power gift, which is the gift of miracles, the gift of uh, healing, and the gift of faith? Or is it possible for one person to operate in the vocal gift, which is the gift of prophecy, the gift of speaking diverse kinds of tongues, and the gift of interpretation of tongues? Is it possible for one person to operate in the three? 
I want to say this, and I want to answer you directly. The times and the seasons that we are in, one person can operate in all the nine gifts. One person can operate in all the nine gifts. And the reason is because there is an emergency in the spirit of harvesting of souls into the kingdom to herald the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you must understand that the world is not just moved by the word. If the world is moved by the word, I want you to understand the world will come to church. The world will come into the kingdom because we are living in a day and in a time. Every radio station, they are preaching. TV station, they are Christian televisions and they are preaching 24-7. But they, the world is still in the world. What attracts the world is the demonstration of power. Jesus told them, you are following me and you are here because you saw me heal. You saw the cripple walk. You saw the blind recover the aside. That is why you are following and that is why you are here. Yes. If the world see the demonstration of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, if the world see the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit, they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus and we can depopulate hell and populate heaven. And so we are living in a time where one person can operate in all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and more. Last question. Pastor Paul. Yeah, the question I'm asking if it may be out of the teaching today, so maybe related in one way I can ask it. Go ahead. Uh, um, at one time I was invited to go to the hospital to visit somebody that I knew. I don't been. think that the people that are online is hearing you. That person had open heart surgery and I've never seen it before. So when I went, they said, okay, when I go there, okay, uh, I'm going to pray. But when I arrived there, suddenly I didn't feel any sympathy because most of the time when I pray for someone, I, I feel like I'm sympathetic to that person before I can pray for that person. Because he's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, and Jesus was moved with compassion and healed yes. everybody. And so anytime you feel that compassion, it means that the Holy Spirit is moving you towards the person to pray for the person. Yes, so go ahead. I, I, I didn't feel any, any compassion. So they asked me to pray. I wanted to open my mouth. My mouth could not open. I didn't feel any compassion. They said, I'm not going to pray. I, I just shook my head. So when I, I was wondering whether it's the situation that I saw but one thing I know, when I got inside, I saw him, but I had no compassion. There was no feeling of compassion for that person. And when they asked me, would I pray? I just said, mm -mm. So I was wondering whether I went, I did something wrong by not praying for that person at that time. As a matter of fact, if you prayed for that person, you have done something wrong. If you had prayed for that person, you have done. You know, one time I had a certain strange experience. It, that thing, it blew my mind. You know, many years ago, at the time, I didn't really understand. There was somebody who was sick. He, I mean, the guy, young guy, has swollen, man, about over 300 pounds. Swollen. And as... A young teenage believer who is on fire. You know, when you are growing up like that in the Lord, man, you, you feel like, hey, in this situation, you know, you can deal with it. And so, <laughs> I, 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 I told the person that, take me to that man. I'm going to lay hands. That he will shrink. So, they took me because <laughs> they, the guy have been in that state for so long. So, he was on bed in his bedroom so i entered into the bedroom and the family was there the children were there two kids the wife and the sister was there and i said i came here to pray for him and i want you to believe god with me that there will be a miracle so i was going to pray for him for healing but when i opened my mouth to pray 
I was praying for forgiveness for him. So I paused. I started the prayer again. But I prayed for forgiveness for him. I left there. I didn't pray prayer of healing or recovery. I was only praying God forgive him of his sins so that his soul will not perish. Forgive him of his sins that his soul will not perish. That was the prayer I prayed. I left there. I was so mad. That what was wrong with me? I went there to pray for this man so that this man would be healed and I was so disappointed. That the man wasn't healed. I didn't even pray for healing for him. I am there praying for uh, uh, forgiveness of sin. When I don't know this man, I don't know what kind of sin or what he has done or what he has not done. It was in the process of time that I came to understand that that sickness is unto death. But the reason why the Lord sent me there is to pray that his soul will not perish, that God will have mercy upon him and forgive him so that when he die, he won't end up in hell. He will end up in heaven. You see, so answering your question, when you got there, the reason why you didn't have any compassion or sympathy to pray for him because that sickness, that open heart surgery, it wasn't designed for you to pray for total recovery. The Holy Spirit didn't want you to touch it in any form or shape. That is why you didn't pray. The compassion left you. And the fact that the compassion left you, you must understand that the power to heal wasn't there. The gift wasn't there. It wasn't operative. It wasn't in action. And so if you do anything, you are doing it, even though, you see, oftentimes we think that because we are praying in spiritual, you can pray and be in the flesh. Because it is not God ordained. It's not spirit inspired. So you would have prayed and nothing will happen. In fact, God will be mad at you. The Holy Spirit will be grieved. And so what happened was that the Holy Spirit restrained you from praying for the person. It, not, it is not because you did something wrong. It is because you were obeying the Holy Spirit. And in fact, the way you are saying it, it looks like you even obey the Holy Spirit unconsciously without you knowing. It was later on when you came to yourself, you, you started feeling guilty that ah, I should have probably prayed for this person. These people know that, you know, I'm a man of God. They were expecting some prayer for me and I, for him and I didn't pray. And I, that, no, the Holy Spirit led you, restrict, restrained you, restricted you, limited you, decided, I know you, you won't pray. I'm shutting your mouth. You won't pray for this person. So you didn't, de you didn't do anything wrong. The Holy Spirit restricted you. Amen. I think my time is up. Amen. I trust God that somebody has been blessed. You see, you are online. I can't take your questions. If you were here, I would have taken your questions. That is why next week, you should be looking forward to coming here so that when I teach, you can ask your questions. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's time for offering. Let's take offering and get out of here. If you are watching, you can give through the medium that is on the screen and uh, I want to pray for you Heavenly Father I pray in the name of Jesus as your people give I ask that you will bless them immensely I ask that you will expand their coast you will cause them to flourish on every side and you will do great and notable things in their lives in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah well Go ahead. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him all the way. Can you sing it again? I love that song. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, 
with him all the way. You want the Holy Spirit to use you mightily in his gifts. You have to follow him all the way. All the way. There are no shortcuts. There are no corners. You have to follow him all the way. If you want the Holy Spirit to use you mightily in his gifts. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, tomorrow we have an encounter hour from 12 noon to 1.15 p.m. You don't want to miss it for anything. Come, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's move the heavens and the earth. You will get results. You will get manifestation. Your request will be granted. You will see the hand of God. Hallelujah. So if you have never attended Encounter Hour, I personally invite you for tomorrow's Encounter Hour. It's 12 noon. 12 noon. Thursday also 12 noon. Hallelujah. Friday, I will continue with uh, the series I started. How to overcome. How to overcome part three. How to overcome part three on Friday. And then don't forget, Sunday, we have the early morning glory. The early morning glory. Uh, the first service, we call it the early morning glory. Uh, is from 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And so, if you cannot make it to the 10 a.m. service or the 6 p.m. service, you can come to the early morning uh, service. Hallelujah. I will be ministering and I will be preaching. Uh, last week or this Sunday, this past Sunday, yeah, this past Sunday we had a great time. And so I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, this coming Sunday at 8 a.m. to 9.30 if you can make the 10 a.m. service. And then I want to also let you know that March 23th, we have an all night. March 25th, we have an all night from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. And I'm looking forward to this all night. Why? Because Moses prayed a prayer in Psalm 90. In case you don't know, Psalm 90 was written by Moses. And Moses prayed and he said to God, For the years wherein we have been afflicted, and we have seen evil. Psalm 90, the verse number 15. Let there be a divine compensation. Uh, for the past two years, 2020, 2021, we have seen evil. We have seen affliction. There are so many of you that you have lost everything that you have. But I want you to know that as we come together and lift up a lamentation unto God, this year is a year of restoration. It's a year of restitution. It's a year of abundance. It's a year of blessing. I don't want you to miss this all night for anything. Wherever you are, you may not be in Georgia. You may be out of state. Listen, get your ticket, rent a car, drive and come to this all night. Come and let's hold the horns of the altar. And let's hold God and say, until you bless me, I'm not leaving you alone. Please, you don't want to miss it. March 25th, from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. It will be happening right here at Prayer City. God bless you. Let's say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at Encounter Hour. Bye-bye, and I love you. <laughs>